Hi everyone and welcome to today's presentation, How to Channel Your Personality Type for Success. My name is Andrea and I'm going to be your moderator for this session. While you may like to take notes, we'd like to let you know that today's presentation is being recorded and you will be sent a copy of the recording and the presentation slides in the days following this webinar. Throughout the presentation, I'd encourage you to ask any questions you have for our presenter via the Q&A function through Zoom. There'll be time for Linda to answer your questions at the end of today's session. If you're interested in tips and strategies to help you succeed in your career and studies, we recommend that you visit USQ's social hub. This site houses hundreds of blogs, presentations, magazines and videos that contain tips and advice to help you make the most of your time at university. Social Hub is free to access and you don't need to have a social media account or a USQ student number to access any of the materials that are housed there. With me today is Linda Bayfield, Learning and Development Coordinator at USQ Human Resources. Welcome Linda and I'll hand over to you now. Thank you, Andrea, and hello, everybody. Thank you for participating in this webinar. The focus of this webinar will be on the personality types of introversion and extroversion and how you can channel those personality types for success. Before we get started, I'd like you to think about what the definition of an introvert is. Don't worry if you don't really know, just have a guess. Thanks, Linda. So as you can see on screen, um, we'll be using poll questions throughout the webinar. So we're now asking you what you believe an introvert is. If you can answer on screen. Okay, so Linda, it's quite split. So 50% um, agree that it would be someone who is shy or timid. 40% say that it's someone who likes to recharge by spending time alone. And we've also got 10% of people who said it's someone who's not very outgoing or friendly. Right, very interesting. And uh, I think you're all right. There's, those are all elements of introverts that we recognize uh, in society. So the key thing today of thinking about introversion and extroversion is where do you put your attention and get your energy? So let's take a moment now to consider which of the two following descriptions seems more natural for you. Description one, I like getting my energy from active involvement in events and having lots of different activities. I'm excited when I'm around people and I like to energise other people. I like moving into action and making things happen. I generally feel at home in the world. I often understand a problem better when I can talk out loud about it and hear what others have to say. The following statements generally apply to me. I am seen as outgoing or as a people person. I feel comfortable in groups and like working in them. I have a wide range of friends and know lots of people. I sometimes jump too quickly into an activity and don't allow enough time to think it over. Before I start a project, I sometimes forget to stop and get clear on what I want to do and why. Or, description two, I like getting my energy from dealing with the ideas, pictures, memories and reactions that are inside my head, in my inner world. I often prefer doing things alone or with one or two people I feel comfortable with. I take time to reflect so that I have a clear idea of what I'll be doing when I decide to act. Ideas are almost solid things for me. Sometimes I like the idea of something better than the real thing. The following statements generally apply to me. I am seen as reflective or reserved. I feel comfortable being alone and like things I can do on my own. I prefer to know just a few people well. I sometimes spend too much time reflecting and don't move into action quickly enough. I sometimes forget to check with the outside world to see if my ideas really fit the experience. 
So here's a short video that sums up really well the difference between introversion and extroversion. Are you an introvert or an extrovert? Most people think you're either one or the other, but actually these terms represent extremes. And instead of looking at these terms as labels, let's view it on a spectrum, where you can fall anywhere in between. An extrovert is a person concerned primarily with the physical and social environment, while an introvert is a person concerned primarily with his or her own thoughts and feelings. The terms were made popular by Carl Jung, a Swiss psychiatrist who invented analytical psychology. Extroverts, aka the life of the party, they're outgoing and talkative, risk takers, attention seekers, and enjoy group work. Psychologist Hans Eising expanded saying extroverts get anxious when left alone and get energy from social interaction. Introverts, aka the charming wallflower, are reserved and solitary, take time with decisions, have fewer but closer friends, and focus on details. Or as Eising would say, introverts get exhausted by social interaction and need solitude to recharge. These terms may help us understand ourselves, but very few people fall clearly into these narrow stereotypes. You can't just lump everything into these two categories and then just deny everything else. You might be outgoing at work, but prefer to spend free time alone. Or you're incredibly focused at school, but prefer to live it up on the weekends. These terms also help us understand our brains. A 2012 study showed that introverts and extroverts had differences in gray matter in the prefrontal cortex. So while these terms have some value, don't get too wrapped up in the labels. In fact, some psychologists have rejected them altogether. You're a special person with a unique view on the world, and no personality is better than the other. So just live your truth. Now I'd like you to take a moment to reflect on all the information given so far and tell me whether you think you are an introvert, an extrovert, or something in between. Okay, so we can see that 69% of people agree that they would be somewhere in between. 15% um, an introvert and 15% an extrovert. So a good split. Congratulations, we're all normal. So if we go a bit farther back, we find that the terms introvert and extrovert, originally spelled extra, Vert, with an A, were popularised by Carl Jung in the early 20th century. Unfortunately, their meanings get confused between then and now, and we started thinking that everyone belongs to one camp or the other. But actually, Carl's point was that these are the very extreme of the scale, which means that most of us fall somewhere in the middle, as we can see from our poll questions. In the 60s, psychologist Hans Eysenck proposed that the difference between introverts and extroverts was that they simply had different levels of arousal, meaning the extent to which our minds and bodies are alert and responsive to stimulation. Hans' theory was that extroverts have a lower basic rate of arousal. This means that extroverts need to work harder to arouse their minds and bodies to the same normal state that introverts might reach quite easily. This leads extroverts or extroverted people, though they might not be quite on the extreme end of the scale, to seek novelty and adventure and to crave the company of others. So our key themes here is where do you put your attention and get your energy? We all sit somewhere on a continuum between introversion and extroversion. There are physiological differences between an introvert versus an extrovert. To explain the graphic above, here is a quote from Dr. Martin Olson Laney, author of the book, The Introvert Advantage. While extroverts are linked with the dopamine, adrenaline, energy spending, sympathetic nervous system, introverts are connected with the acetylcholine energy conserving parasympathetic nervous system. 
So basically, introverts need less external stimulation than extroverts because they are more sensitive to dopamine. And if they get too much, they will feel overstimulated and anxious. So an extrovert will go to a party with loud music and plenty of new people to soak up all they can to feel stimulated, while an introvert will go to the same party, listen to one song and talk to one person, and feel the same level of excitement. Knowing that there are real physical differences in the brain of introverts and extroverts makes me, as an introvert, feel more comfortable with myself. While we tend to see this division as a 50-50 chance, in reality, only about a quarter of the population is introverted. And you can see we process information differently also, depending on where we sit on that continuum. Introverts generally reflect on new information at length and react relatively slowly. Extroverts are geared more for action, so they reflect and react almost at the same time. So for introverts, the good and the bad. So these are the things to be aware of. The good things, you choose your words carefully because often you've put a lot of thought into what you're going to say. You can focus on tasks. You've got volumes, volumes of information inside your head and you're typically quiet, which can be seen as a good or a not so good. The bad or perceived as bad could be social customs. Often you'll see an introvert in a room full of people um, being in the corner, maybe on their mobile phone, checking messages. I know that's something I do. Uh, potentially bad first impression. Verbal communication, won't be, they won't be as expressive as extroverts, so they won't verbalise and communicate as much. And no or little networking. So they're things to be aware of if you believe you shift towards the introversion end of the spectrum. At the other end, the extroverts, they promote fast growth and development because they're always seeking new ideas and opportunities. They are socially active and they are expressive, so they can communicate quite well. The bad or perceived as bad, remember there's nothing bad about any of these traits, they can be offensive or unknowingly annoying. Um, and those of you who think you go onto that extroversion side of the scale can relate to that. There can be less self-awareness and they can be impulsive in their behaviour. So where do you put your attention and get your energy? We all sit somewhere on a continuum between introversion and extroversion. Each personality type has its strengths. So let's consider a group work scenario. So consider a scenario where you're required to work with a group or people to complete an assignment. How do you facilitate a group that includes both introverts and extroverts and gives both equal opportunity to contribute? So here's some ideas. An introvert needs quiet time, even a minute or two to collect his thoughts and reactions to a given problem or situation. Giving the entire group a few minutes to write down their ideas on their own before sharing can give the introvert the space he needs to process. On the other hand, the extrovert needs time to talk out loud, to process her thoughts while she's actively communicating with others. Knowing this, you can allow the extrovert a few minutes to explain her situation. She just might find clarity or even solve her problem herself simply by talking openly about it. Between meetings, give each of these types a way to communicate with the entire group possibly through an online message forum. The extrovert will appreciate the ongoing connection to the group and the introvert can take his time to process internally, then communicate at his leisure. Have a think also about how this may impact teamwork in your career. We all have our preferred personality styles and the self-awareness that you will start to develop as part of this webinar will allow you to factor in and work around your personality style. We're now going to talk about personalities in networking. How to feel comfortable while making connections. Making connections is essential in both your studies and career. 
You might assume that extroverts would feel most comfortable in a networking scenario, but there's a few things that both introverted and extroverted people should be conscious of when connecting with others. So top career networking tips for in introverts, take your networking online. For many, it's the in-person quality of networking events that can be particularly challenging. The idea of having to go up to strangers can be enough to make hands sweat and stomachs roll. Fortunately, we live in a digital age. Take your networking to the web, establish an active Twitter presence and interact with people in your field. Bulk up your LinkedIn profile and activity. You can network one-on-one. -on -one. Not all networking needs to be done at a big event or meetup. While group conversations can be a struggle for introverts, a one-on-one -on -one conversation can give them an opportunity to show off keen listening skills, a real strength, and make a solid connection. Suggest coffee dates and other one-on-one -on -one interactions and ask friends and colleagues to set you up on chats with people outside of your immediate network. Bring a friend. Headed to a big gathering of strangers? See if you can bring a friend or co-worker or even an acquaintance along. There's just something about knowing at least one person at an event that can make it less nerve wracking. Bonus points if the person you know isn't shy and feels comfortable starting conversations with strangers. Don't forget old contacts in a quest for new ones. When you're in networking mode, it can be easy to focus on expanding your network, tracking your growing number of LinkedIn contacts obsessively. Don't forget, as you make new connections, to keep in contact with the old ones. Drop old co-workers an email to catch them up on your situation. And of course, don't forget to ask after their career too. Schedule coffee dates and keep in regular touch with the important people in your network. As with friendship, you don't want to only be in touch when you need a favour. Follow up after introductions. Collect business cards and send emails the next day. Make them personalised and targeted to increase your chances of success. Add people on LinkedIn. Most people will accept invitations from people they've met in person. Find examples of networking letters to send after your initial connection is made. Be prepared. As you prepare for a networking event, think of it as if you're going into battle. Your weapons are small talk and chit chat. If there is a list of the people at the networking event available beforehand, make a list of the ones you'd really like to chat with. Look them up online to find out a bit of their work history and to start making conversation easier. And smile. It's one thing to be the quiet person at an event or even to be off in the corner answering emails on your phone. It's another to look glum, uncomfortable, or so unsmiling that you seem angry. Try to look engaged with the, event, with the event. Present yourself outwardly as being open and eager to meeting new people, even if you feel differently inside. Remember the event does end, so you can go home to your quiet space to recharge. And the last and most important is to be yourself. Not the center of attention, that's okay. Don't pretend to be, that would ring false. You can be reserved and take advantage of your listening skills. You don't have to be the centre of attention if that's not a role that you're comfortable with. After all, the extroverts need an audience for their what stories and wisecracks. Perhaps the most important tip of them all is to remember that you're not the only shy person in any situation. It's estimated that half of all people in the US are extroverts, introverts, um, and they have said some of the research is down to a quarter of all people are uh, introverts. In fact, one additional way to succeed at networking events may be to locate a fellow introvert and you can often find them in the corner. Now, extroverts, I haven't forgotten about you or those who um, drift towards the extroversion end of the continuum. Extroverts thrive on the energy they gain from interacting with other people. With your ease in approaching new contacts and your outgoing ways, extroverts may seem like the ultimate networkers. While they do enjoy some distinct advantages in making connections, their gregarious nature can also work against them. An extrovert can either come across as interested, charming and charismatic, or can seem overbearing if they're not mindful of their energy. 
Here are eight networking tips for extroverts. So follow the 60-40 rule. Listen 60% of the time. Speak and ask questions 40% of the time. Open-ended questions encourage others to engage in the conversation. Show a genuine interest in their responses. Stay focused on the person you are speaking with. If you are half listening while you look around the room for the next person you want to meet, you are blowing this interaction. Be present by providing your full attention. Get comfortable with a pause. Extroverts will say just about anything to fill the void. Be aware of that. Learning to accept brief moments of quiet allows other people a chance to jump in. Share the spotlight. Avoid dominating the conversation or constantly steering the topic back to yourself. You may be bursting at the seams with thoughts and ideas, but avoid interrupting when you don't have the floor. It's not uncommon for extroverts to feel compelled to take charge of a conversation rather than stepping back and allowing others to participate. Speak thoughtfully. Extroverts often have great communication skills and feel confident when making conversation. Extreme ease can also lead to spewing information like a fire hose. Be aware of your body language and tone of voice. From maintaining eye contact to positioning yourself to face them, your body language exhibits that you are interested and tuned in. A loud, boisterous laugh can come across as overly friendly and appear inauthentic. Pass out business cards with discretion. Offer a business card when you feel it's an appropriate opportunity. Randomly passing out business cards to everyone and anyone looks as if you are giving away free sandwiches. However, when you are in a group, don't just hand your card to one person. Give one to everyone in the circle of conversation. And recognise the value in other personality styles. Use your big personality to approach those who might otherwise be overlooked. Spending the extra effort to get to know people with quieter personalities can be a networking goldmine, as introverts are sharp, bright, thoughtful, organised and fully equipped to take you on. So now we're going to have a look at your personality style in job interviews. Interviews are already nerve wracking, regardless of your personality style. But there are some simple things you can do to calm your nerves and channel the advantage of your personality type to help you succeed in an, in, in an interview setting. So here's some tips for introverts and extroverts in an interview. Introverts, arrange your day strategically. So think about your timing for your job interview and allow yourself some quiet time before you go to your appointment. Doing that will allow you to feel calm. It will allow you to gather your thoughts together and perform at your best in the interview. Prepare for small talk. It is part of a job interview, particularly when you walk in at the beginning. Focus your best efforts in the beginning and at the end. And this is where it's all about making a good impression. Match the interviewer's tone. If they're quiet and reserved, you can match that. But if they're loud and um, expressive, you can also match that. Remember, it won't last for more than an hour. You can also mention that you're introverted. So that shows a good self-awareness, which is a, an excellent employability skill. Extroverts. Let the interviewer take the lead and allow for pauses. Answer the questions concisely. Avoid too much information. Try not to interrupt and stick to your plan. For both personality types, one tip that can help to keep you focused is to take a pen and paper into an interview situation. Always check with the interviewer if they don't mind if you take some notes as questions are asked, but what it will do is allow you to prioritise and gather your thoughts before you answer your interview questions. The key points are that where you put your energy, where you put your attention and get your energy will determine where you sit on the continuum between introversion and extroversion. It is very rare, rare to sit at either end of the continuum and each personality type has its strengths. It's about channeling your type for success. Thanks for joining us. In wrapping up before we answer some questions, I'd like to show this video. <laughs>
Ashley. 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 I made it. What's up, girl? Yeah, we can eat. Everybody can hear you down the street. You're very loud. Oh, hey, Sarah. I didn't even know you were here. I live here. This is my house. Huh. Oh my God, Sarah. You won't believe what happened today at the softball game? Oh my God, thank God you're home. I have the craziest story to tell you. Uh, you know I'm really tired. I think I'm just gonna go to bed. <laughs> you guys, you have to... <coughs> Chris! Oh, oh my yeah, God! How yeah. are you? Hey. Oh, I haven't seen you in so long. Sarah, how are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm oh, let's see, uh, Sarah. Oh. What you got? Um, I don't, I don't know. I probably have to. Today we're talking about incident reports. Wait, is this about the reports that I accidentally shredded two months ago? Because I swear to God, I didn't mean to do it. It was just like there were two piles, and it's like, when are we gonna? Wait, the no. You know uh, what I mean? Actually, we're not talking about that. She actually had home now. Really? In the morning. You didn't even finish your drink yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll oh. text you tomorrow, though. Okay. okay? Bye, Mike. Bye. It's getting kind of late. I know. I think I'm gonna go. No, Sarah. Oh, okay. Okay. One okay. more drink. Can we just stay in tonight? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, perfect. But Max is having a party tomorrow night if you want to go to that. Mmm. That sounds great. Yeah, Let's both wear matching leotards. Okay, definitely. Done. Boop, boop. Okay, great. Thank you, Linda. So we'll now start our Q&A session. So if you haven't already done so, please use the Q&A function to send through um, any questions that you might have for Linda about any of the information that was shared today um, or any other questions that you had in mind when you registered for this webinar. So um, to kick us off, Linda, I was wondering if you would mind sharing a little bit more about um, whether or not you should take your personality type into account when considering um, the types of careers or the types of specific jobs that you might apply for um, and whether there might be you know any examples of specific roles that sort of would be suited best to one personality type over another. Yeah that's a great question. Um, certainly you will find different career roles um, and career job families um, will have more of a bundling of different personality types. The thing to be most aware of is how energy draining certain jobs would be for you. Um, speaking from my experience as an introvert, part of my job is doing this, facilitating training and talking to lots of people. Um, doesn't mean I don't do this job, it just means I be aware of how that I can take care of myself so that I can recharge in those down times. I spent a long time as a high school teacher as well and uh, managed that time with a lot of self-care. Once I finished a day, I would certainly need some alone time and if you, if you go home and, and look at the way I, I manage my life, you'll see those introversion traits appearing. Um, you do have some stereotypical um, careers that tend to have one or the other of personality style. Uh, where I work in HR, we do have quite a lot of introverts, um, which is interesting considering most of what we do is helping people. Um, if you look into the, say, media communication space, you will see quite a lot of people towards the extroversion end of the spectrum. Um, in the education field, you'll see both. Um, and it really varies between the subjects that they teach. Um, when you go into the financial fields, um, you will see quite a lot of introversion personality styles. Um, the legal profession is one where I've seen a lot of extroverted personality styles. So it um, doesn't mean you see exclusively one personality type. Um, remembering that we all sit somewhere on that continuum. And looking at some of the attributes of each of the styles, you would have said, yep, that's me, I can pick that. But some of those other things you might think, no, I don't do that so much because it's a continuum. So um, the key point there is to be aware of what your personality style is um, and to be aware of how draining particular careers might be. So for example, an extrovert sitting um, in a very quiet office at a desk um, without much social interaction or talking will be quite draining for them and they will um, find that difficult, um, missing out a lot of that social interaction um, in that environment. So they might then seek to use other behaviours to start to generate some energy. So um, it's just something to be aware of. 
Beautiful. Thank you, Linda. Um, so in terms of some of the biggest challenges that personality types can present in a workplace, so obviously you do have um, quite a mix of different people, um, particularly in terms of leadership um, and managing a team. Would you be able to talk us through maybe some of the most common challenges that personality types can present in a workplace setting and how you might be able to overcome them both as a team member and also from a leadership perspective if you're leading people with a variety of different personality styles? Yes, yeah, certainly. That's also a great question. Um, Look, in the workplace, you'll see a real mix of people. Um, all of our workplaces are very diverse. Um, and some common challenges you will see often come back down to different personality styles. That's where you'll see a lot of conflict will root from. Um, so one that comes to mind would be an extrovert sitting in an office um, that's very quiet surrounded by introverts and seeking to generate some energy. Um, the introverts then would potentially feel um, quite drained by that person um, and that could breed some conflict around introverts wanting some quiet space to focus on their tasks. Um, so that's something that comes to mind. Um, what you might also see is when you do some group work together, and this could be study or at work, and when you've got a number of different personality styles in a group, how you approach a project will be different for each person. So um, typically you'll see your extroverts wanting to talk it all out and jump straight into action and start getting things happening. Whereas your introverts will be the ones saying, whoa, slow down, hold up, I want to think about this and I need some time to plan. Um, so again, that can breed conflict um, if those two styles aren't generally catered for. Um, some really good tips for overcoming them first is to have that um, self-awareness activity within yourself but in a workplace or within um, a group when you're studying have a conversation with people um, there's plenty of personality quizzes that you can find online that are free um, Myers-Briggs is one of the largest personality styles um, and they have a lot of abbreviated versions of their quizzes online essentially one component of Myers-Briggs will, will talk to introversion versus extroversion so tips for working with other people is to essentially have a conversation with them about how they prefer to operate. Um, your dynamics are going to be different depending on the group that you're working in and depending on whether you're working with a peer or with somebody who's your boss. Um, working with an introverted boss um, can mean that they need time to think about information before they make a decision. Um, now, depending on your personality style, that could either match up quite nicely or it could become quite frustrating um, because a more extroverted type person would want their boss to start making quicker decisions and getting more actions happening and therefore more results. An extroverted boss will be um, the person that doesn't want to think about the details. Um, they'll get really excited about something and come out to a team and say, okay, we're going to do this fantastic project. Here's our deadline. Go for it. Go off and do it um, and work it out. And it's the introverts that start saying, okay, um, how are we going to do this? How much resources do we need? Who's involved? And they'll start asking those questions there. So um, the key message in here all is to have self-awareness about your own personality style and what triggers that might provide in you from behaviours of other people. So for example, myself as an introvert, I know that I have particular triggers around um, very gregarious and loud behaviour when I'm busy and I'm trying to get some work done. So the first step for me is to have that self-awareness about that's a, that's a trigger for me um, and a potential cause for conflict. The other thing I need to be aware of is my preferred communication style. I would prefer to communicate by written means, via email or via chat, rather than picking up the phone and calling someone. Um, and that can be a watch out because there are definitely times in a job where it's better to call a person and have a conversation with them rather than sending an email. Um, particularly when there's some emotional 
um, content that needs to be discussed. So you need to be mindful of how um, people communicate with you and what your preferred methods are and try and take a step back and use that awareness to help you decide what the best course of action is. Great, thanks Linda. Um, we've had a question come through from Joanne who's just asked, um, are you able to share any strategies for dealing with conflicts um, in a university group work situation? If you've got conflicts between two extroverts, for example, so you've got two quite dominant personalities in the group, um, how within a group setting can you resolve conflict of that nature? Okay, great question. Um, and I'm sure that's definitely happened many times before. Um, so often when you've got those, those two extroverted personality styles, they both want to dominate and lead. Um, and there's going to be a, a bit of conflict um, in between the two of them. Um, so strategies for the group to manage that. Um, again, it's about having some clear direction for the group on who is responsible for what. Um, if the group needs a leader, then that needs to be a designated role for somebody in that group. If there's two people that wish to be a leader, um, then perhaps the tasks of the leader need to be separated so that both of them can feel valued. Um, the best way to kind of overcome some of these um, tugs of war um, between different personality styles is to have some really clear expectation around who is doing what. Um, every group needs somebody to keep pushing people along to reach that deadline. Um, it just needs to be clear who is responsible for doing that. Um, and they need to communicate, they need to talk to each other. Um, I just dealt with an extrovert on the weekend setting up for a wedding. Um, and this person would tend to come in and um, give directions out um, when we thought we were doing a completely different thing and, and that created conflict. And again, it came back to, well, okay, what is your role here and what is my role here? What needs to be done? Let's take a step back and think about who's responsible for what and be as clear as possible. The, the best thing people can do is to continue to talk to each other. It doesn't have to be face to face and your introverts, you will, um, when you see conflict, a trait of an introvert is to hide or avoid when you see conflict. Um, and it could be perceived, these two extroverts um, could be perceived as conflict, whereas they don't perceive it as conflict at all. Um, so again, it's about voicing that. If you're feeling uncomfortable and you're feeling like things aren't working, um, there needs to be a group discussion as to how that, that can be resolved so that everybody in the group can feel like they're included. Fantastic. So this will be our final question unless um, our participants have any others to submit. So if you do still have some questions for Linda, if you could send those through now. Um, so Linda, coming back to more of a career perspective, how can you avoid being pigeonholed in your career or overlooked for opportunities because of your personality type? Um, you know, so for example, you mentioned before that the public speaking side of things isn't something that you're naturally comfortable with but that might still be a career skill that you want to have. So how can you avoid being overlooked or, or pigeonholed in your career based off personality traits related to being an intro, introvert or an extrovert? Yeah, great, great question. Um, and it goes both ways, doesn't it? Like you, you don't want to be pigeonholed as an extrovert either and as somebody who um, always does the speaking and the presenting and the facilitating. That might not be something that you enjoy. Um, so the best strategy there is, is to develop your skills. If it's something that you, um, you say, for example, see yourself as an introvert and you say you do want to be involved um, in something that is seen as more extroverted, so um, that might be involve a lot more face-to-face -face interactions with people, the best thing you can do is show that you can do that. So get out there and get experience doing it. Um, whether that means you've got um, a part-time job you can do that in or a full-time job you can do that in um, or volunteering um, or a member of a, a club 
Um, there's lots of ways that you can show that you have those skills that aren't traditionally part of the job that you might have or not have at the time. Um, it's, it's a really good question too because people tend to make assumptions um, and that's part of our human makeup is that we make assumptions about people um, and the, the best way to try and shift those assumptions are by making that quite clear. Um, so for example, if you're looking to apply for jobs, um, recruiters will mostly look at what you put on paper in an application. So you need to think about what your presence is in that application. Are you showing that you have a very introverted personality style by your experience? Um, in have a good look at that and maybe ask somebody else to have a look at it too and give you that feedback. Um, on the flip side, are you showing that you have a more extroverted personality style on paper? Um, and again, ask someone else to have a look at it and give you some real feedback around that. If that is the case and you don't, you don't believe that you've got a, a wide breadth of experience sitting in there, then go out and get some. Um, there's plenty of resources here at USQ that you can tap into to support you in doing that. Um, and you can also show through your skill development. So attending training sessions um, or gaining accreditations and various skills like public speaking can show that you're motivated to do those extra things. Great, thank you, Linda. So we're just going to launch our final poll for the day. Okay, well that wraps up today's session. Thank you again to Linda for joining us and for sharing your knowledge um, and to all of you for taking part in today's presentation. A reminder that we are going to send you a copy of the webinar slides and the recording from today's session so that you can revisit this material in your own time and again and again throughout your studies and in your career. So as you'll see, we're currently running the quick feedback poll. If you could please take the time to let us know what you thought of today's presentation, we'd really appreciate your feedback. Our next Beyond the Books webinar is all about advice and support for digital entrepreneurs and equipping you with the skills and knowledge to develop your own startup. Our presenter, Joy Taylor, will discuss the ins and outs of startup culture, what you need to know and mistakes to avoid when starting your own entrepreneurial journey. If you're interested, make sure that you register via usq.edu.au forward slash webinars. Thanks for joining us today and we hope to see you at our next webinar.